do you, do you have thoughts? Do you read books? Is the kitty cat. Well, hello, and welcome to the start of this vlog, and I don't know how long this vlog will be, but I, let's see, today is the 24th, I move on the 31st, so for my sanity, I'll probably wrap this up 29th through the 30th so I can edit it, upload it, and ignore it while I'm moving all the boxes. But I still have reading plans because reading is a great way to decompress for me because I'm not just going to be packing nonstop all week. That would kill my soul. And so I have been working on, if you saw last week's vlog, these two bad boys. Uh, this one, Tagana by Guy Gabriel K. I have had on my radar for years. <laughs> Literal years. Excuse me. He has no sense of personal space. Um, premise of this is you have a land, an area of this world on a peninsula, I believe, that got into a dispute with a sorcerer. And because of this dispute, the um, loss of the sorcerer's son, the sorcerer got vengeance by decimating the region and making it so only people from that region can say the name. So Tagana is that region, and only those from Tagana can hear the name when spoken. So it's really just, you know, salt in the wound injury to the people of that region. And so our main characters are people from Tagana, um, many years later after this war, trying to get vengeance for their land. And I am so captivated by it. Now, it's not a perfect book. There are things that I'm very like, yes, this was written in 1990. Um, in particular, The Fool, I'm not sure how I feel about the representation of um, the Sorcerer's Fool. That's been a little hard for me. And so in the first part, we meet a musician who finds out he's from Tagana and kind of meets a bunch of other people. And he that's how he gets incorporated into the plan. And that was interesting, but not like blowing my mind. And then we meet Dianora. And I really liked Dianora's section. She's very interesting. Um, she is the daughter of a character we meet in the prologue. And she has found her way basically into the sorcerer's, they call it something else, but it's essentially the harem. She is one of the many women he will call to his bed at night. And she has grown to have complex feelings for this man that she has sworn she will kill for vengeance for Tagana. And her perspective is so cool. But also something just happened where I'm like, I don't, I feel very conflicted <laughs> about what's happened here. So there are some things that kind of make me cringe, some in representation and some just decisions the author has made for me, but I'm very invested. I love this writing style. Like it reminds me of when I read Robin Hobb and I get really invested into that the settings that I'm not normally as interested in, but they can make them come to life for me. I think he has some of the best setting descriptions I've read. Like I can really feel the weather of the area that I'm in. I can really kind of see the streets, like the way he described Tagana, how it used to be. It almost is like, oh, so this is like ancient New York City. Like it was really well done. So I, I, I am both liking this a lot um, accepting that it was written oh, like 30 years ago and so but also in some ways it's a more progressive than your average um, classic fantasy book this isn't classic right it's only 30 years old but it's not really in the same vein as modern fantasy although I guess you could say it is part of that bridge that brought us to where we are today if you care about the sort of history fantasy books. So really want to finish this this week. I am really glad I'm enjoying it and I'm engrossed in it. I was very nervous that this would be a chore because the last thing I needed this week was a chore of a book. So whenever I pick this up, it's really fun to read. I'm very immersed and it's great. So yeah, I'm currently right there and I don't know how much I'll read today, but I'm hoping to read more. The other book I'm working on is this short story anthology called Sunspot Jungle. Um, this was an anniversary present. So this um, publishing company, Rosarium Publishing, made five years. And so they put out two short story collections, volume one and volume two of Sunspot Jungle. And this is the first one. And I've read about a little over half of it now. And yeah, I, I'm, the quality of the stories is really up there. They're all over the place. Um, I'm really, 
I, I there are some that I find forgettable, but the ones that I really like, I really like. Um, I think my biggest thing, and this is more a part of how I read, but I have up to this point only read short stories in collections by one author. And this is many authors. Like, I think when I was looking at the table of contents, there are three pages full of short stories. So there's a lot of short stories, a lot of different voices, which is great in theory. In practice, it means I can really only read a few short stories a day before my brain reaches new information capacity. Um, you know, it's, it's somehow harder to read uh, like 50 or 60 pages of this than 100 pages of this, because this is all the same voice, it's the same world, I don't have to constantly enter a new space. Versus here, every story has very different themes, settings, characters, which is great, but jarring and hard. So I kind of wish that I wasn't who I am and like to like finish things in like a sort of short period of time. Like I don't mind that this is taking me longer, but like my brain was is like, you should be able to finish this in two weeks. And realistically, like I won't maybe enjoy it as much if I try to do that. It's very weird. I I know why it probably had to be like two volumes instead of four, but I feel like I would have felt better if it was four volumes and it's very arbitrary, but that's just that's where my brain's at. But very quality collection like and also i am discovering so many cool new authors that i want to read their novellas and other short stories so like it's also great for that and they have a great section in the back you know with all of the authors little blurbs so you can learn about them all and so like it, it's it's really good it's just also a lot more work than i anticipated because of my constant re-entering of new word worlds writing styles like everything like every time i read a story it's a completely new thing <laughs> so i think that's something i've learned about myself is i have a preference towards short story collections of the same author and so yeah learn something new every day so that's this check-in and now i should go pack boxes so of course it's finally a reasonable temperature and my hair has decided to not be a frizz ball and I'm not recording any videos for booktube today other than this clip, but that's okay. I'm just happy fall is coming. This means fall is coming. It, it's If it doesn't look different to you guys, it feels different to me. And yes, he's he's here. Always here. He's been like licking and like, I need to trim his nail. He's like trying to claw into my skin. It's very annoying. Updates though. I have been making very good progress in Sunspot Jungle. I am in a stop it good stretch of stories um ones that are very um what's the word i don't know i'm just very i pick it up and i don't notice time has passed as i read the story i don't really know what the word is for that engrossing maybe you'd think from all the books i read i'd have a better vocabulary but i hold that my vocabulary is that of like an honor sophomore student in high school i don't i think that's where i've like peaked um but some that i really liked actually i'm just gonna go to the table of contents because I'm horrible at other things. Um, the one I really liked was called A Good Home. This is by Karen Lawachi. I don't know if I'm saying her last name right, but she's a Guyanese Canadian author and that story just is so good. It's um, you have an army vet. Um, he, um, because of his time spent, is in a wheelchair and he takes in, he adopts an army droid who also was you know, went through the war and has more um, mental and um, psychological fallouts from that. Um, they have chosen to not voice and things like that because the droids in this world were given more humanity because they noticed that when they didn't program in humanity, that's when you had issues. And it's about them living together and that companionship and dealing with the prejudice of the world around them because people are like, Oh, you shouldn't have that droid. That droid's just gonna go crazy and kill ya, you know? Oh, it was such a good story. I loved that story. I need to find more works by that author. What's another one? Oh, I went through like a really creepy section for a bit. <laughs> there was one called A Model Apartment. That was a very Lovecraft meets, I think, South Asian horror. That was creepy. I was like very thankful for a second that like I'm not a visual reader, cause like, I almost visualized it and I was like, ah, nope, 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 nope. I don't want that. I don't want that. Uh, and there were some other ones too, but I think that one was the creepiest one for me. 
And then the one I read just today that I really liked. Uh, yeah, that's the one I... Well, I like two of them. So, How to Piss Off a Failed Super Soldier. It was really funny. Uh, you have this guy who is a superhero who's so strong, he keeps breaking his body. And his brother, who is younger, is a better super soldier. And it's it's basically about this person's trust issues and dealing with being a super soldier who's not, like, perfect. I just thought it was funny. And then Super Duper Fly. I don't even know how to explain that one, but I... Oh, it's, it has a really good narrative twist. So I'm not going to talk about it too much, but that one, that one stood out to me. So I'm really enjoying a lot that I've read in this collection. I think definitely this halfway, like the, if, you, if I split it into fourths, this third fourth has been really good for me so far. Not that the other ones have been bad. I mean, gosh, the first story is by Jemison in this collection. But yeah, I'm just, you know, t trying not to put pressure on myself to finish it very fast because then I won't enjoy the stories as much. And then I've made lots of progress in Tagana by Guy Gabriel K. And I'm really enjoying my time. This is definitely, I mean, so far like a four star read. And I think what I've noticed also about myself is that I really like 90s like fantasy. I keep wanting to say classic fantasy and I don't think that's a true statement, but 90s fantasy. Because there's a certain writing style and approach and setting in 90s fantasy when it's almost fall because like some of the descriptions at least in Tagana it's like oh I'm very excited for fall because they'll be describing fall granted he's describing all the seasons because where we're set up have all four seasons um even though I think it's supposed to be the equivalent of the Mediterranean I'm not sure if the Mediterranean gets all four seasons like they are being described here like we're talking like very distinct four seasons <laughs> but I um we have two kind of paths in this book. I don't know if I explained that in the last clip because it's been a few days. And one path I am more invested in in the other. There's a character, Doriano or something like that. I'm forgetting her name. There's a whole section. Dianora. And I really, really like her sections. I'm not sure if I really like her. But, like, her sections, I, I think there's just so much um, complexity to her situation and the warring parts of herself that we're exploring. And it's also, like... If, if I'm going to read a political-based book, I really like when it's set up like this, where I'm, like, in the court. Like, we're in the court, we're with the king, we're with all the advisors, we're seeing all the manipulations, we're there. And so that's when we're with her, we get that. When we're with um, other characters, who I won't name them, because I think learning their names is kind of part of the beginning of the story, um, but they are kind of setting things up and traveling a lot, and it's not bad, because I think Guy Gabriel K does a really good job of only putting things on the page that are really important um, for character development and for my investment into them. So it's not like I'm, I'm not reading them traveling, but they definitely have been going different places, and things have happened off the page that I have to learn about through different ways, which is fine, and it's being done really well. But I just... I've been slowly gaining character attachment in this section, but not as quickly as I had with Dianora. So I think in that section, it falls more into that 90s fantasy where I'm like, it's a little more work for me because I'm just not as invested in whatever's happening. Um, but I mean, in the last section, I, I, I am our main character in the second section. It's more like a troop. Because you get multiple point of views, and I just think all the point of views are they're distinct characters. I think they're well done. I think the complexity and magic of this world, although definitely a low um, fantasy system, is that what it's called? Soft magic. Soft magic, where you don't have strict rules, is still really well done. Yeah. I'm just having a really good time. Um, there are definitely things that are very... This was written in 1990, but... I have to accept that it was written in 1990. Um, when I do my wrap-up or review, I'll, maybe I'll talk about that more, But because um, I want to finish the book. But there are definitely plot choices that are made, character decisions that were made, representation choices that are not the worst. But they're not the best either. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, goodness knows there are books written this year that aren't the best either either. And also, I am the worst to myself. I literally have all the boxes over here. You can't see them. You can see some over here. All the boxes. I haven't even packed my second bookshelf. I've only packed one of my bookshelves. And then this silly one, 
decides, you know, I'm going to go to the library today. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to go on a walk. I have some holds over there. I'll drop off the thing around your neck because I did the review for that, which well, I don't know when it'll be up after you've seen this, but I did a review and I'm like, I don't need this book anymore. I used it for the review. I used it for book club. It can go back. And maybe I should wait until next week after I moved, right? Before acquiring another stack of books. But here I am because I wanted them. I, I, I wanted the serotonin. So here we are. I got Ship of Magic by Robin Hobb. This is the first book in the Live Ship Traders. It's right on the cover. I didn't realize this book was so big. I wanted it to be the size of Assassin's Apprentice. <laughs> that one was like 400 pages. This is like 800 pages. But people really love this trilogy more than Farseer, and I did like Farseer. It's just when you read Robin Hobb, it's just like, <sighs> can't Fitz get a break? Can't he? The answer is no. But this is this doesn't have Fitz. Is it Fitzgerald's chivalry? I don't remember his name. But uh, this is a different set of characters, same world. Again, it's fallish, and this is 90s fantasy, or because I think it's 90s. It might be almost early 2000s. She's been writing for a minute. Oh my god, I don't want to see the maps. I just want to see her copyright page date. <laughs> Why is this so hard? Found it. 98. So still in 90s territory. I also got Once Upon an Eid. Pretty sure that's how you say that. That's how I've been hearing it said on the internet. It's just lots of short stories uh, about Eid. And A, don't know a lot about Eid, so I think this is a great way to introduce myself to it. Um, you know, what better way than through 15 Muslim voices? I've also been wanting to read more Muslim authors, so this is also a good way. Like, if I see authors here that I like their voice, I can look into their other works, so yeah. And the other two are for book clubs. One is House in the Silurian Sea, which I even have on Kindle. I have both of these on Kindle. I'm just ridiculous. And I like having the option to switch between physical and Kindle. But this is for the beginning of September. Tember. There's a live show that I'll be a part of. And I, people love this book. Um, I think it's just a very wholesome, good tale. Very fun and makes you feel happy. Like, I think it's a feel-good movie equivalent of a book. Which... I've been reading some Thick Boys and Heavier Things, so I'm like, that's next. Like, after this, this. I can tell you right now. Whenever I finish the last 200-some pages. And then Unkindness of Magicians. Um, uh, Yumi and Cheyenne have a book club, Traveling Sisters Book Club, and we're reading this, which I've heard about. It was supposed to be a standalone, and now I think it's going to be part of a duology, but I think the story itself is complete, and I know nothing about it. But... Uh, it's got really cool winter vibes on it, at least on the cover. So, yep, that, I just, you know, mini library haul, because I am masochistic, and I just, <sighs> what are you going to do? So, yep, I'm avoiding packing right now, so I should get back to that. See you in a bit. All right, so first, sorry if the sound's awful when I do this, but you need to see this. Look at that. So sorry if that was jarring, but, like, She's so freaking cute. And this is going to be the end of this week's vlog because I need to take these pictures down. I need to pack more things and I need to not worry about this. Um, but I also finished both Tagana and this short story collection. So let's talk about it. Um, before I talk about that, I'm still listening to Kingdom of Copper and I'm very close to the end. I don't think I'll finish it today. Maybe tomorrow. It's great. I really, really like these stories, and I'm really happy that I have Empire of Gold ready to be read, as you have seen in my TBR for next month. I still don't know if I'm going to use audio or physically read it, since I've gotten so attached to these audiobooks. This is a new problem, and I completely blame BookTube for it. But, start with Tagana, the big boy. The big, chunky boy. Um, I, I did really like it. Um, I really liked the acknowledgement section. You really see the purpose behind this. I think that's part of why I like his take on the European political fantasy more than the average book. Like, he really does draw from historical events, and he really had, like, a purpose. Like, not it was still your classic tropes in the story, but there were definitely... It was deeper thematically than what I normally get to. It, it is not a five star for me because there were just definitely moments and pacings, perspectives that I just wasn't as connected to. Um, 
I still liked reading those sections, but I just wasn't as connected to the characters or what was happening. I thought the the villains, the basically the idea of good guy, bad guy was really well done. Like you get the perspectives of the villains and the good guys and all the perspectives really do enhance the story. I don't feel like any of them were wasted. Um, I do feel like the story is good. I, it's 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 well put together and it's not like I even need a sequel. Like there are even things in this world that the people in the world don't know that well, but I don't feel like I need another book to delve into it. I think this is a really good complete thought, complete work. Like I said in earlier clips, there are things that I just, just felt uncomfortable about. Um, I'm not saying that it takes away from how good the story is. It's just in the year 2020, when I read it, it made me feel a little bit weird. Um, one is that there is a little bit of incest, not a lot, but a little. Um, and another is that a character has to be disguised and they are not black and they are disguised as a black person in this world. It's a different, it's not our world, but so um, I don't think like, I don't know, that that is just something that I was a little like, what? <laughs> Like, yes, this isn't our earth, but I, I it made me a little bit uncomfortable when I got to that. But otherwise, I, I I really liked the themes and the main characters, and yeah, it was a great story. I think if I ever did reread it, it might be audiobook. It's, he really, like I think I've said in other clips, does this great job of making me see what he's talking about. And I don't know how he does it because no other author is canned for me. Um, like when he's describing the mountains or the seasons, I like can f feel it stronger. I'm not gonna say I can still actually see it. I still don't see things. Sometimes maybe it'll help me pull up like a memory that I have. And so like I'll associate this memory with that. So that's something, but yeah, I'm really glad that this book that I've waited five years to read, maybe longer, gosh, I don't know. I finally read it and it holds up. It's a, it's a good, it's a good work from the nineties. And now Sunspot Jungle. I don't even know how to rate this, so I'm not, I'm just not. So first of all, I've been using an old library card as a bookmark because when I was starting to read this, I forgot all my bookmarks. So my boyfriend took a library card out of his backpack for me. Anything can be a bookmark if you try hard enough. And so a pro and a con. So many short stories, show me, so many authors, right? That's great if you want a variety of authors to discover, which I do. I read every author description before reading their story. There are definitely authors I discovered because of this, and I'm going to read more of their works because I was blown away um, and impacted by the story that I read. That said, there is no universe in which you pick up this book and you're going to love every story. They're all just too different, which is again a pro, right? This is a diverse mixtape short story collection. It just meant that, I don't want to say maybe a third, but at least a fourth of the stories were not ideal for me. So that's like a hundred pages that were work. There were some that really just didn't work with my brain. They were very, um, I don't know if they were stream of conscious, but I did, there was a, a paragraph that was one sentence and that just never works for me. Um, I'm not big on verbose <laughs> sentences. My brain forgets the point of the sentence about halfway through. Um, but there, there are some that really stuck out to me. Um, the one I just read recently, actually I just read two at the end of this that are really good. Um, one's by Tessa, it's K-U-M, so I'm gonna say come, but I'm not positive about that. And she's an Australian writer and she wrote exception which I you know it's interesting to read the title of a story after you've read it and I, as someone of mixed heritage it was a very good story it's a world where now people are classified by their ethnicity um, or um, not by your choice you're not filling out the form they like read your mind and decide where you belong culturally and if you don't belong like our main character doesn't belong you get sent to a prison camp essentially although they don't call it that but it's basically what it is they start a rebellion it's kind of how the about where the rebellion goes and i i really liked the themes that were brought up in that story uh the other one i read was recently that i really liked was by charlie jane anders she wrote city in the middle of the night which is not my favorite sci-fi story but it's pleasant enough so i knew i'd like the writing enough just because i liked the writing enough in that story but this is the day it all ended and <laughs> it was pretty funny um so 
you have this dude who works for a company that makes the most useless trinkets and the world is ending uh, or climate change is real bad uh no relationship to right now and <laughs> He has a crisis of consciousness and goes to his boss and is about to resign. And he's like, you're late. And he goes to his boss like, how am I late? You didn't know I was coming. He's like, you were supposed to have a crisis of consciousness three months ago. And the story goes from there. And yeah, it was great. So I really had a lot of hits in this. Like if I were to look through the um, table of contents, Walking Awake by Emma K. Jemison, I really liked. do 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 Let's see. I really liked Underworld 101. That one was crazy. Water was... So the story of water was like, what if everyone needed implants to exist in the world? Like how we all need internet and our phones. You know, like things that you actually need to be a functioning member of society. Um, even though, you know, they're not provided for you. But you, you know, maybe you couldn't afford the one without ads. So suddenly your body is being inundated with ads that affect, you know, your sensory system. Like not just your eyes and your ears, your nose, your endorphins. Like... It was, it was insane. It was, like, short, but, like, I still think about it, and that was, like, a way early one in the collection. Um, let's see, which other one stood out to me? Doo -doo -doo. Blood Drive. Oh, Blood Drive by Jeffrey Ford. That is, that is timely. That's about a world where if you are a senior in high school, you have to bring a gun, and all the teachers have guns, and, yeah, nothing bad happens there. <laughs> nope. Uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Oh, yeah, Amal El Mortar's Madeline was really nice. I really liked that one. And let's see. I'm trying to think of ones that I just haven't told you guys about. Like, there are just a lot that, like, even now as I look back, I'm like, yeah, I had a good time with that story. So, I don't know if I'll buy myself a copy of this. I might, just because it's pretty. But I definitely, like, I've been collecting on my Goodreads um, works by these authors to look at, so I am excited. And now... I have to take these two things and a whole stack of other things back to the library because uh, you can drop things back off at the library but not on weekends and it's Friday and I move Monday and I won't have time Monday to drop things off at the library and I don't want to move this stack of things with all the other stacks of things so I'm gonna do that. And what to, you have to look forward to in the next vlog if I get to read anything is this guy. I'm gonna read House in the Cerulean Sea. I think it's gonna be the perfect like level of reading that my brain's at because I hear how wholesome it is, found family, romance, fantasy. I am excited and I love its color. Like this this color scheme is everything to me and I'm just I love hardback books from the library. I love how they feel. They they're they're much softer and less rigid and I don't feel like I can hurt them. So I you know it's like I get to keep the sleeve on but it's already like protected. So oh yeah a magical eye island, a dangerous task, a burning secret. I don't know. So that's what I'm going to do and finish Kingdom of Copper and move. And yeah, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So that's it for this one. If you've made it this far, uh, hi. <laughs> you can put an emoji down below. Just the smiley face is fine. Like, if you liked it, subscribe if you want to. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.